Hey everyone, Captain Kimo here and I'm going to show you how to shoot HDR with a Canon Rebel. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to turn on the camera. And next we're going to set the set the camera to AV mode. That would be aperture priority. And to shoot the HDR we're going to need to access the menu button. So we're going to go into menu and what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, shoot mode to auto exposure bracketing and in the uh, the second tab here under the menu you will access the uh, auto exposure and you can see down here where the auto exposure is if you hit set you'll get an option to to pull out your uh, your other two brackets and if you use the dial up here you can pull out the two brackets and you can see them come out you can set it to one stop up one stop down but uh, that's not enough um, two stops up and two stops down is perfect for uh, most scenes and for this scene it might might be good I might have to uh, do a little, a little bit of a exposure compensation to fill in some of the shadows but we'll see um, and other than that that's pretty much it what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and set it so let's go back to menu so I can set this hit set now it's set for um, auto exposure bracketing to take our exposures for HDR so I'll go into our settings here and I'm going to go into the ISO real fast and I'm just going to do 100. Um, 100 is good because uh, when you're doing HDR it tends to produce a lot of noise um, and we don't want to have higher ISO because higher ISO will result in more noise. So we'll set it to 100 and I'll hit set. And the f-stop for this particular lens, it's a manual lens. so. I have the f-stop set to 8 and then we're pretty much ready to go just uh, hit the uh, trigger button and you're, you're, you're done but or let's just do it real fast you can see that it took three shots and then I will uh, show you the exposure here is the overexposed image here's the underexposed image and here is the um, evenly exposed image the first image at 0 EV all right, so here's a quick tip I want to show you um, so that your camera is um, a little more steady. I, I like to go into the uh, the shoot mode here, and instead of continuous, I will go into the two-second mode. And what this will do is this will let the camera settle in for a second so that it doesn't move. And uh, and we, w we don't want the camera to move at all, so by setting it to two seconds, it lets the camera settle in. So I'll set it to there, and then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, push the trigger button and then it'll take all three shots next I'll show you real fast the exposures that I just took and here is the uh, here's the over here's the under and here is the even so here's another trick that I'm gonna show you here um, if I go play here this is the even exposure this is the under exposure now with the underexposure, my highlights are actually not as dark as I would like them to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this uh, it's a little plus minus button. It's the AV mode or the AV button here. I'll click it and then I'll use the dial. I'll use my dial here. And what that will do, I'll use a dial. And what that will do is that will move my exposure or move my, um, my exposure up or down and I'm gonna move it down two stops and then what I'll do is I'll shoot two stops up and two stops down with the exposure compensation two stops down and then I'll get a little darker image and it's a little darker here for the uh, for the underexposed image all right, so now that we got our exposure, let's uh, go ahead and go to the computer and I will show you how to merge the photos together to create an HDR. Okay, so I am on my computer now and I've already chosen the three exposures that we're going to be using. I've decided not to use the uh, extra underexposed image because of all the movement that uh, I was getting from the water and the uh, wind in the leaves. Before we begin, I just wanted to note that I did shoot this using JPEG and normally I shoot in RAW because RAW produces better results. 
um, but I didn't want to complicate things so I just left it as is. And with that said, let's go ahead and put together our HDR image. Um, I use Photomatix Pro to merge the photos together. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the exposures that we'll be using. So this first exposure right here would be the uh, evenly exposed image. This will give us both good details overall. The next exposure will be the underexposed image and we're going to use this for the highlights here in the, uh, the sky to get the color from the uh, sky. Whereas this image of the uh, the evenly exposed image there's only a little bit of color so we'll use the underexposed image to pull out more color there the next image is the overexposed image and we're going to use this to bring out the uh, the detail in the shadow here in the foreground area you can see here and in our underexposed image it's very, it's completely dark uh, the evenly exposed image you can see some outline of the trees but you don't see any details so the overexposed image will fill in that area very nicely and so what I'll do now is I'll just uh, go ahead and take these three exposures here and take them into Photomatix okay so I have Photomatix open and now we're just gonna go ahead and load the uh, exposures I'm just gonna simply open the uh, the directory those images we're in. This is the uh, even exposure, under exposure, and over exposure. And I'm going to click those, select those three exposures and drag and drop them into the Photomatix window. And then I'll get a uh, merged HDR window here. I'll just hit OK for that. Um, then I'll run into another window where I'll just hit OK also. And then I have a pre-processing option window that pops up. Now we had some movement so I'm gonna use the uh, remove ghosting. Um, the movement is in the leaves and in the uh, the water where everything was moving within those three exposures so we're gonna let Photomatix take care of the uh, ghosting automatically. Um, reduce noise I'm gonna leave that uh, checked and I'm gonna leave reduce chromatic aberration checked so then I'm just gonna hit OK and then we're gonna go into the tone mapping window I'm in the uh, tone mapping window now and we have the default preset selected so let's go over the uh, Photomatix uh, user interface real fast this is the uh, presets that you can select so you can select from different presets and over here you have the uh, the settings for the sliders so you can adjust your uh, image to how you see fit. Photomatix has three different ways of tone mapping or creating your HDR image. So the first two ways is using tone mapping with a detail enhancer or tone compressor. Tone compressor produces uh, better tones, more realistic image, but it also doesn't produce, um, it does not do a good job in producing dynamic range in your photo, whereas detail enhancer does a better job of doing that. Exposure Fusion, I don't use it too much, but I do like using it for nighttime images, but it does produce some realistic image, but I will I tend more towards the uh, tone mapping using Detail Enhancer, so I'll start from, or normally what I'll do is I'll start from Preset, and I'll just select a preset, and then I'll just adjust my settings, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to make it fast. I already have a preset for this, and I'll just click on that, and this is going to be the, uh, the photo that we'll end up with, with those three exposures. Now, once you're you're done processing your HDR image all you have to do is hit the process button and then Photomatix will create your HDR photo I normally don't stop here and I usually go into Photoshop to do some extra post-processing work so I'm gonna show you what I do there so let's go ahead and process this image and it will take into Photoshop okay so we are in Photoshop and I have my HDR photo open here and I'm just gonna do a few things I, I won't get into more of the advanced stuff so I'm just gonna keep it basic what I do here is I duplicate the image um, and normally I'll denoise the photo uh, using uh, Topaz denoise and I'll do that so here is the Topaz denoise window I'm just gonna use the uh, JPEG strong preset and click on that and just hit OK and what Topaz denoise does is it helps smooths out my image so when I start really post processing the photo it doesn't enhance any imperfections next once I denoise the image I'll go and use Topaz adjust so I'll go into filters and use Topaz adjust to just bring out some of the contrast or the detail in my photo and boost the color up a little bit so here is Topaz adjust and I'm just gonna use a preset here I'm gonna use the uh, classic collection and use Brilliant Warm for this particular photo and I'm just gonna go into the global adjustment really fast and just bring down my adaptive exposure and then bring down my contrast and this will give me some extra color and some more detail in the uh, the shadows um, next I am going to go into the detail here and I'm going to adjust the uh, or detail boost bring that up a little bit and then bring out sharpen up a little and then we're gonna go into the finishing touches 
and I am going to warm my image up a little or maybe cool it down okay warm it up will be good for this image so I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit and I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna go into the uh, vignette and maybe give it just a little vignette and that looks good so let's go with that go before here this is the before and then this is the after just gives it a little more pop to the image so I like it like that so I'm just going ahead and hit OK after I apply Topaz Adjust I'm going to duplicate the image and I am going to just straighten out the image a little bit a tad bit crooked so I'm just going to straighten it out with the transform tool I use Control T Command T on a Mac and I'm just going to just eye it here I'm just going to get that horizon line straight so I'm going to use it and then I'm just going to make the image a little bigger and right about there looks good so I'm just going to hit enter and it, it'll uh, it'll tilt the image to the uh, left a little and it'll straighten it out so let's see this was before and this is after so it's a little straight so that's pretty much it for this tutorial sometimes I do more sometimes I do less for this image it wasn't too much but let's go ahead and take a look at what we started out with here okay so here is our evenly exposed image this would be the image that you would get if you were just to point and shoot the camera into the scene this is what your camera will capture um, the next image would be an underexposed image uh, this will cover our highlights the colors here in the sky the next image is the overexposed Exposure, and this will give us the detail in the foreground here um, including uh, the detail here in the shadows if you were to go into the evenly exposed image everything is completely dark here in the foreground so the overexposed image will cover that and then we took those three exposures this one this underexposed image this overexposed image and we merged it in photomatics to get this HDR photo and next I took it into Photoshop I did a little bit of adjustment using some Topaz plugin to give the image a little more uh, of a pop so that's it for this tutorial if you want to learn more about photomatics or Topaz you can visit my website at captainchemo.com I have areas where you can download the programs the trial version and you can purchase it too from there I have coupon code available that you can use to save some money on the plugins and the HDR software. So that's it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and until next time this is Captain Kimo signing out.